out of her E if she does try to disengage from any of these fights. Now we see Valiancy going for another one right now. Valiancy clearly isn't too worried about my opinions right now. The Ignite comes down from Valiancy, and that's going to be Zenzen using oh. the ulti to break oh. the deck ultimatum. Valiancy on a sliver of HP. The cast will pop again, and Valiancy goes down. Oh my goodness, nice edge to the top side. Valiancy thinks they can get more, but Bob Joseph here in the mid lane, you'll find Sunny Flash Roar from Azusa and leaves fine. Too late. Swifty has been on the ball and on schedule so far this game, and maybe that death just set him off. And here comes the engage right now into Zen Zen, but leaves us here, teleport in from Azusa. I don't think there's going to be any way for a slave to disengage right now. Swifty trying to stay around, keep his top laner alive, but Valiancy will fall as soon as possible there, leaves. Picks up that kill. Swifty has to get away and is left wondering, really, what can you do with this Rift Herald right now? It's going to time out relatively soon. The die the next way in. Look at this. Zenzen! But the cast doesn't get enough. Everyone is still has HP. And Zenzen might be the first of all. Swifty with a big gorge drink in the back line. Ultravox walking away, and that is the first kill picked up. Shut down. And another one on Zenzen. There is three. Can Valiancy find this kill? Ultravox, the only standing member of TDE, is left. And that is a win fight for New Wave Tsunami at the 11th hour. Some of these board seekers on the back line, they do have Valiancy pushing. There needs to be room for TP. The engage does come through. Reset is quite large at the moment. Big engage onto the back line, though. Picks up two in the Cataclysm. Flashes are burnt out. Ultra Box is playing aggressive on the side. Look at that damage from Kogma. Two are found so far, though. Leaves. Sunny guys. The right now, there's still no TP to come through from Valiancy. I think they're just deciding, hey, let's try and trade back as best we can. Like you say, they're missing out on that Kai'Sa. It's still being held. Ollie without ultimate at the oh moment. Let's get caught by the tornado. There's the flash. Doesn't save the life right there. And now resets a little bit caught out in the base. Valiancy is coming, but so is TDE. They're able to pick up the turret. Able to go for this in him. Hello, everybody. We are back with an absolute banger of a game. My personal pick for a match of the week. It's going to be Pandas with Hats versus Art of War Esports. And joining me for this absolute thriller is my comrade in arms escape. You have talked about how, you know, just just in between games, you're having a quick conversation and missing a band on the side of Pandas with Hats. I'm guessing that's for a late lock in. Um, are going to be taking away some stuff from uh, Seaborg. Cyborg? Seaborg? Am I right Seaborg. this time? You were bullying me the entire time. You were talking it's about not, how important it's not this Seabrog. game is. Seabrog? It's not Seabrog? I've decided it's, it's Seabrog. Seabrog. Um, you said how important this game is going to be for both these teams. These two are both fighting desperately for some contention into playoffs right now. They're sitting 7th and 8th at the bottom of the table. That does not mean that either of these teams is bad. Uh, I would say Pandas has really been the team that underperforms, even though they're overperforming. I don't know if you agree with me there, but like they, they seem... I see what you're saying. Like they, they have so many moments where they're so close. And AWE is trying to rebuild. They've swapped out their roster about 55 times now, but I think that maybe they have found something that has started to work for them now with Seaborg in that mid lane. Yan Yan on the ADC um, has been those two big changes that is uh, you know they're going for right now. Double bans taken away from Seaborg in that mid lane right now. The Jinx... Never strays away from that blue side first pick if she doesn't have to, and that is going to be picked up for Voltaic Penguin. Yeah, and as we start to see uh, Zaya, the immediate lock-in for the side of Art, of Art of War Esports, something I want to bring up is the fact that Pandas with Hats does have a roster change for this game, unfortunately. Uh, think that I can will no longer be playing in FOF this season, unfortunately. School uh, does get in the way of things. So uh, Pandas with Hats have instead gotten for a good time as their jungler, and this is a player right. that I am very excited to see, and I know is personally very hungry for I, their I chance on the correct. FOF stage. I have to correct for 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 a good time. This is think that I can's final game, as far as I know. Oh, uh, this is think that I can's final as game. As far as I know, that is a name change. Somebody, please come in and correct us. Uh, no, 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 we no, do no, have no. a new jungler on the platter for uh, Pandas with Hats, and they are, uh, like you say, hungry to to play very well. I don't know if they're sitting in the wings for this game, um, because as far as I was told, that is a name change for Think That I Can, and this will be uh, his final game that we will get to see. Subarashi locking in that Tarik now. Zaya has been picked up in pro play a lot recently. The Shen for Schmeckles might be able to add Slowbro to that solo kill list with that. Definitely going to look for it. It is going to be locked in. I'm hoping to see some Ignite in that top lane. Schmeckles has been kind of that murderer in the top side this season. Um, Zaya lock in really early. Had a lot of conversations with people about this one. Uh, it's a very strong champion at the moment. The Lethality build is very, very good. Uh, my only concern is, is that you really need her to be into a counter comp. 
Uh, you need to be in a situation where the ADC is going to be taking a lot of dive for her to get her maximum effectiveness, and they just first picked her early, so there's a lot of room for pandas to just say, okay, we're going to pick range as best we can, and we're going to just outrange that Zyre and not give her any room to do what she needs to do. Um, but we'll see whether that's going to be a crit or lethality build. Uh, Slowbro being handed that uh, Mordekaiser uh, has been uh, kind of a solid pickup for him, a, a player who I'm, I'm not afraid to say I think has been underperforming this season. Uh, Slowbro, I would expect to have seen him do a lot better this year, uh, has been a strong contender in previous seasons and just really has not looked the top of his table. And this is that midpoint in the season. This is they need to find this win if they want to realistically have a good shot at playoffs. Uh, and, and this could be their game to do it. And you know what, if you're feeling the confidence on that Mordekaiser, I'd like to see it. Uh, I just did some quick searching and researching for you, Escape, and I can confirm that For a Good Time is definitely not the same account as Think That I Can. No so kidding, as far okay. as I am aware, this is their new jungler. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm not wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, and what, what I know about For a Good Time is that they were provisionally going to be the jungler for Baby this season, but ultimately they decided to go with Dax. So I know that they are absolutely hungry for this opportunity on stage, and they're there's no better time to get that match in because we were talking about how both of these teams, they are on the brink of playoff death and they need a win right here, right now to stay alive in that playoff race. And realistically for both teams, this is going to be, quote, the easiest matchup they're going to get. So if they're going to start mounting that comeback both sides, it starts now. Second phase of bands come through. Going to see Lissandra taken away from Seaborg in that mid lane. Viego taken away from the jungle. Cassidy and Rumble power picks taken away from Hughes. Carry in that middle lane. And Jarvan is going to be the lock for Crims up in that jungle. Yeah, protecting that pick for Seaborg. And I want to see how deep into pool we are uh how deep into the pool we are of hubes because that is every champion i associate with hubes taken off the table now Zareth. Zareth, i guess is still there i think might have played a velkos game at some point i might be wrong about that there might have been somebody else i know civilock has been using that previously he is looking like a trundle at the moment wouldn't that be so lovely for you uh, if you could you could ah! find a in one of these days <laughs> he's going to be locked in for for a good time uh once again one of those names that you really just do not have a good way to say during a team fight um so <laughs> he's gonna be is gonna be hanging out on that trundle is going to be probably taking those jewels against the jarvan uh trying to get something done let's see what hubes wants to pick up here they have a decent range composition you were saying Zareth, you know outranging zai is going to be their best way to do this at the moment and it is going to be a zir potentially locked in i'd be very curious to see if they are going to stick with that high consistent damage champion really takes a long time to come online but when he does in a big way and that really does scream Hubes to me, and that is going to be locked in and finished up, and it is just Seaborg's pick into that Azir to be seen. Yeah, and I really want to see a pretty crazy counter pick out here from Seaborg. We, we've seen Seaborg be really solid since coming onto Art of War Esports, but I want to see a pop-off game. Red side, last pick into something unconventional, into the heart and soul of Pandas with Hats. What do you have to offer? With five seconds remaining on this clock, what is your opportunity to get Art of War Esports back up and rolling and with the timer reaching zero it's going to be yone all right so let's see this is a very heavy ad composition on the side of art of war uh, obviously they do have that mordekaiser is going to rely on slowbro to get some stuff done but there is a lot of room for wombo combo right now they are looking for that coordination to try and bring them a win right now and we'll see how for a good time is able to meld right now with pandas with hats who really need this win going on into game we are going to have a short break before the minion spawn that'll give you just enough time to get your nose deep into that fof connect magazine has been updated once again every single monday there is some fun content going in pages just get get longer and longer every single time there is more and more contributions i want to say massive hats off to everyone in the fof community for making that such an interesting read uh but yeah as we go into game just now uh, I think biggest thing to look at right now, obviously we'd always talk about those runes, summoner spells, and starting items. Uh, I I'm going to quickly just draw attention to that bot lane right now. Yon Yon deciding to start with that Doran's Blade and the triple health pot plus the longsword picked up for Voltaic Penguin is hold on. There's a little bit of pressure up in this top side. Slowbro has only seen one for a good time hanging out on the edges right there. I, I should mention, uh, I, I think that we managed to just breeze past this one. Uh, Trundle has gone top lane. Yeah, we're actually going to see River Shen, and I don't know about anyone else here in FOF, but I'm a big fan of Spika. And regardless of the season he's had right now, I only there's no, e is 
It's Man. only his haircut. <laughs> there, there, there is no other time in esports that I appreciate much more than the speaker's River Shen. So I'm excited to see for a good time piloting that. I know for a fact it has potential, and for a debut FOF game, let's see what you got. As we see a late invade coming out from the side of AWE, Ooh, it's going Yon to be Yon's dicey first. here. Yon Yon's okay, first, the Mossy and Standard goes down to the. So close on the health bars right now. It's just going to be the ignite burnt out there. Voltaic Penguin going to keep them off of his jungle right now. That red could reset right now. It is max leashed at the moment. And no oh. else get reset. That's really unfortunate for for a good time. Who doesn't have smite online right now. Schmecky looking in that bot lane. But it's just going to immediately take the trade with slow bow. Yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe it is going to work out. Hubes immediately trading. There is instant action at the moment. Uh, there is no better way to describe the first two minutes of this game other than psychopathic, and that's what I want to see from two teams on the brink of death looking for their opportunity to get things going and to make a stand. So as these lanes start to go out, now that we're finally done with the jungle shenanigans, both junglers are going to be pretty far behind in their clears, but overall, I don't know how healthy Shen's going to be. Probably going to have to burn both smites on that three camp clear. Jarvan going to have a bit of a better time, so we'll have to see where Crims decides to dedicate the early pacing in this game, because should have a health advantage, even though we'll be quite far behind. For a good time, really struggling against blue buff, just going to manage to take it down, is going to have to go do something else for red buff to tick up, or for smite to come back online, because things are going to get a little dicey over here fighting the fighting the green frog over in that jungle, and honestly, that might be the most exciting thing happening in the early game, but Seaborg wants to prove me wrong with a Big extended trade into Hughes, chucking him down to half HP, maybe setting up for a solo kill with that Ignite coming down pretty Feels quick good. after. Uh, a lot of trading in the top lane, Schmeckel should have no problem winning those. I'm obsessed with Trundle, this champion's Look broken, you cannot fight it. Look at this play top, Seaborg. Uh, or excuse me, uh, for good time is here. Crims is here. Uh, both those top laners are still in location. Dr. Oh, Speckles, there's a knock up right now. Kill, traded back. And you know, this is both buffs on Shen. Shen early game is terrifying. There's so much damage coming out of for good time right now. The flash is already there's a flash. Crims has to flash away. And that is going to be the safety of that Jarvan getting away. It is three camps for both of them, but there is just enough HP. First blood going over to Crims, but the trade back for for a good time. Welcome to the friend or foe, your hardest first clear that you've probably had this month and you had to deal with, and he does manage to pull it off and finds a return kill in that top lane. Yeah, and that's a return kill that's very important. The positioning was looking really bad from the side of Pandas with Hats. Dr. Schmeckel's positioned a little far away from the jungler that he knows is in his lane, so bit of an awkward misstep, and by a fraction of a second, uh, Crims is the one picking up first blood, but a nice trade back, and, and Summoner Spells traded back is ultimately going to make things relatively relatively even up in the top and jungle. Uh, honestly, those kills were so close that over on the sidebar, the the uh, the kill of Shen onto Mordekaiser came in before First Blood, which just shows how crazy this game is turning out to be just four minutes in. Mackles, the level disadvantage, dealing with Mordekaiser is a little bit scary right now. It's already low HP. The flash is burnt there from Ariri trying to get in. Voltaic Penguin has to know that there is Crims on the side. With great hook there from Ariri, but he's already taken so low. Subarashi might be the one to finally fall. That heal comes out from Voltaic Whoa. Penguin, thinking selflessly, but is not in range to get that on the support player. Maybe it was just Ignite nullified it or something like that, but unfortunately that is going to be uh, the attempt kind of wasted there from Voltaic Penguin. Summoner spell down, and that's going to be kill picked up for AWE once again. And Crimson center the action. Yeah, and both of these junglers setting the pacing of the game. Crims on Jarvan has a little more of that tempo in the early game and using it to great effect. Shen having to take uh, just a, a bit of a camp advantage and honestly, I think maybe could have invaded into that top side for a, a little bit of Krug action, knowing where the Jarvan is, knowing that Mordekaiser is not in lane right now. But that being said, uh, Pandas with hats, almost every member is taking a nice fat reset right now. And as we walk back onto the map, I think Dragon is starting to be in the eyes of both of these squads looking towards what kind of play can they make to get that armor on their side. Yeah, uh, you know, that's that's going to be the focus. And once again, Crimson is down here has been continually at the center of everything right now. The back has already finished up for both of these mid laners. Only person yet to recall very notably is Yon Yon. 
doesn't have the ultimate online, is still sitting on that flash level 5 at the moment, but here comes the play in the bot lane, they are not content with anything right now, there's no flash oh. available for this, Jinx, CC into CC, bye bye, who needs a recall, Yan Yan, picking up their first kill, the game, or excuse me, their second kill of the game, I missed that one. Yeah, and that's the play that I was talking about that could lead to Drake here. We're going to have to see where they go. Once they shove in that bottom lane, I don't think there's going to be much to go other than the Drake. The things come out. The mid lane is getting pushed in uh, for the side, so they could look towards that. But nope, it's going to be that mountain. Drake is going to be the focus for Art of War Esports right now. As Dr. Schmeckel's level 6 against Slowbro, I honestly think might have been able to kill there if you're just willing to pop the subjugate. But that being said, an advantage taken for the Trundle right now. Going to use that, get a reset, wave under tower. And this is going shaping up to be a very good game. Oh my goodness. Uh, missed from the Azir ult as Dr. Speckles is caught under the tower and the Ignite is down. Slowbro flashes out and wham from that mace is going to seal the fate of Dr. Speckles, dying for a second time up in that top side. Hubes was looking for something pretty neat there. Uh, the attempt to push into the Shen Taunt, keep the CC online for just long enough to get Seaborg was cool. Uh, incredibly risky, and as a result, you were dealing with uh, not having the ultimate online right now that Ione is a level up on you. Obviously, that wave should even things up a little bit. We're talking about um, how much action there has been, and it is really showing none of these teams really being able to just comfortably lane right now. The CS number is generally pretty low, other than Yon Yon, who has just been, you know, just pick up a kill, go back to farm. That's been kind of the style right now. Subarashi trying to bully off that wave right now, but... You know, seen the Tark more and more recently. It hasn't been all that good, but maybe we'll see some pressure off in the top lane right now. Level 7 on this Mordekaiser Death doesn't realm. have the option to, yes, just pop that Death Realm. Schmeckles has gone back to farming because, think, or excuse me, for a good time, decided that he's not going to win that one, as it turns out. And, uh, yeah, that's kill given over. Uh, Schmeckles, what are you doing? Where are you? Go help your teammate. Yeah, that's a really awkward point of communication there, and I'm sure for a good time is not happy about how that play ended up going, but... That's just some of the foresight that you gotta have on these ganks. It's not as simple as walking in and making it happen. Oh, a Riri with the Hex Flash cleanly into the bush. I don't know if they know where he is, but not able to take the opportunity. He has to back off for the wave state, but it was sick, and I wanted to hype it up. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I could have been good. I, I'm surprised that Riri didn't go for it. You have the Ignite online. Uh, the, both sums are for that Tark, but not for the Jinx. If you can find that hook, once there it again, is. makes the play happen. Here we go. Apparently has agreed with us, maybe this is the right way to go. I don't know how far away you are from that level 6 right now. I know that Zaya should have it first, and she does. So maybe not too far off right now for Ariri. They have to be respecting that Nautilus. Are you going to go for a second Hex Flash into the second bush, Ariri? No, I, would I don't think he's going to have it. to. No, does oh, grab that hook and is found it onto Subarashi. Is low, has the Flash available, burns it way too late. Cataclysm coming down on top of Voltaic Penguin, who, as we mentioned, has no way to get out of it. That is four kills picked up for Yan Yan this early game and you know what who cares about the counter composition right now Yan Yan is dominating yeah and <laughs> this Zai is so accelerated right now things are going to get absolutely terrifying from that ADC position the amount of damage that Zaya can output is quite a bit and having up uh ah words i don't have them anyway having gone for lethal tempo as the summoner spell oh, indicates more of a dps build that hubes is going to miss another emperor's divide as a re finds the flank for a good time is here to counter but gets stunned up and the fate oh, seal God. comes out from the side of seaborg but it's taking so much damage from shen crims finally arriving at the fight scan united from for a good time in the site almost saves hubes but not quite going to find it ultimately the numbers game going to bite the side of pandas with hats as AWE keep finding more opportunities across the map and this gold lead's getting pretty out of control pretty quickly. Yeah, no, I it was so close to you know, like almost almost once again almost. The the ultimate was so close. Great flash from Hughes. They get Seaborg really 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 low after the ultimate. Uh they just can't quite find that kill. And once again, that's got to be one that kills your momentum right now. You're looking up at the scoreboard. We're talking about early game leads right now. AWE once again have found themselves a really early lead, and that's the only way that they found their one win so far is just by playing around the map using Krims to find this early game pressure. Yan Yan is enormous. And if you're, if you're pandas with hats, you have to start looking at this and feeling like, whoa, okay, this is looking a little bit scary at the moment. We are uh, very far behind. We have the composition that could scale better, given the Azir and the Jinx. There's a lot of room for it. Just, okay, I thought a Riri might take that one. 13 <laughs> HP is on the side for a good time. And uh, just going to be picking up those plates on the bot side. So there's room for pandas, but they really need to stop the bleeding. Yeah, and I think on my on this top side here, Dr. Schmeckles taking a very extended trade with Slowbro, but I don't know if you win this Ignite doing so much in the Death Realm seals the fate of Dr. Schmeckles. Getting a little uh, too big for his britches there, maybe a bit in that top side. as now the third Death rolling through for the Trundle, trying to pick fights, and 
Didn't even try and commit Nulti to that. Just accepted fate. Yeah, you know what? I uh, haven't really talked too heavily about it, but, you know, generally Schmeckles is good at finding stuff in this top lane. There's a hook found in the bot side. Cataclysm is, oh going, my goodness. is going to be set up for Dragon right now. Maybe a little bit early. They've already found those cooldowns, though. Here Cataclysm we go. Starting down. Here goes Dr. Schmeckles once again. He is going to pick up that solo kill in the top lane. Add it to the list. Schmeckles able to find an opportunity, but this tower is going to fall in the bot lane. Crims is just sitting on that Rift Herald. Doesn't need to burn it. We're sitting 20 seconds out of Dragon. Hubes is low in the mid lane. Will not be able to get control of that with Oriri being unleashed into the bottom side of the jungle. Uh, and I think this is just going to be Dragon picked up for AWE. They're in a very comfortable position for a good time. Uh oh, Shad. Get caught out with that hook at the moment. There's the flag and Dragon continue the CC. There's Yone over the wall. Going to pick up an assist on the play. Crims, red buff takes it down. Yeah, and honestly, that shit almost got out there. Hughes, you got to be a little careful there about Dredge Line, Flag and Drag coming out from the side of AWE, but nope, not going to happen yet. Seaborg looking, but not going to find much. Rift Herald, though, might find quite a bit in this middle lane. We'll have to see what Hughes wants to do about it. Yeah, I mean, like, you have the Emperor's Divide online, although that Rift Herald took a minute to charge. You cannot, unfortunately, proc eyes with the, uh, the soldiers. I saw the attempt there. There's the Dragon picked up. Turret! Picked up for Dr. Schmeckles off of that one solo kill in the top lane. All five plates put onto that trundle. Uh, that's some money. You know, that that's not something to scoff at. There's a lot in the pocket of that trundle. Uh, obviously, there were plates in the mid lane. I would overall take AWE's end of the stick if I had the opportunity to, but that is a good trade back. I wonder if maybe the play of this game, because the rest of your team is so far behind... You just go, you just itemize for Hullbreaker on this trundle and just try and play full side lane. The, yes. the tower taking potential really is there, and so far, even down quite a bit of CS and gold in general, Dr. Spreckles isn't so far out of these fights that honestly, I could really see that doing a lot. I, I would say, I'd say you're right. Just get that Hullbreaker. Stall for your team. If you have a Trundle that you have to constantly... All right, we won the fight. Oh, but Trundle's on our inhib. Okay, we got to send people back. Okay, but we have to send two back to deal with them. Oh, but he'll get away. So maybe, uh, you know, if you force those types of difficult decision-making, then you can start to stall. You can get Hubes and Full Tag Penguin. If they're down in a bad situation, you can get them back onto the map, get them back getting farm in their pocket. Golden XP is exactly what they need. And, you know, Schmeckles, I don't think, can really be matched by too many people at the moment. He's able to dodge out from uh, Seabor's attempt here to fight. Just decide They're in the Siege middle of the waves. Yeah, Siege Minion decided to be the bigger target there. Just was not hitting that Yone at all. And is forced to back off there. There is that Ignite online for Yone at the moment. Hubes, do you know that you're in a bad position at the moment? Probably not. Slow, bro. Going for the claw there, doesn't pick it up, and for a good time has decided that maybe this is the way to into the game for them. And it's some weird footsies going on right now. Schmeckles has decided this is gonna be the play. The subject does go down. There is the ignite online. There's the assistance unneeded from for a good time. And that kill is just picked up. I don't know where Seaborg's health went. Oh, it went to the Trundle, baby. This champion's broken. I'll preach it over and over and over again. Trundle absolutely absurd right now, and it's for that 1v1 dueling potential. Uh, Ignite, minion wave, none of it matters. Trundle's going to slap. Yeah, and he does. Is able to take it out. Has that Divine Sunder online. Is going to provide a decent amount of healing. A decent amount of percent health damage. It's going to give him something. It's not awful, as uh, Seaborg is once again being put back into that bot lane. Uh, ultimate not available right now for Schmeckles, but I think he's just going to pick up this turret, and you know what? Here's the style we wanted to see from him. Look at how much this is pulling AWE around the map. They're not comfortable getting anything. There's 350 plus the additional gold from the objective bounties into the pocket of all of Pandas with Hats, but mainly into the pocket of Dr. Schmeckles. That's going to make him even harder to 1v1 right now, as uh, he's just going to be able to get this recall off, go back to base, and I really would like to see him go into Hullbreaker. Absolutely. I think Hullbreaker... <laughs> turns this trundle from pretty strong to unbelievably strong as I think we're seeing a little bit of investment banking here from Dr. Schmeckles. Yes, you give three kills over to slow bro, but what does that matter? You pick up a fat shutdown, you pick up the tower, your team's losing, so objective bounties come up, you take a tower, and now looking at a lot of money on this trundle. And there's yeah. a pickaxe and a ruby crystal. It could happen. Uh, I'm desperately hoping that that is what it goes into uh because it's working you know <laughs> just keep the split push going get those empowered waves in you know it, it, it isn't worth going for if you're going to be uh, team fighting uh i don't think that voltaic penguin has seen dr schmeckles this game though and i don't think that will be true for a while you know we're at the 15 minute mark this trundle really should just be doing his own thing he's hanging out at the moment trying to see if seaborg is going to overextend but hey if AW wants to pull themselves up for the Rift Herald right now, they want to do things, which 
I've mentioned it all season long. They overcommit to objectives. If Pandas is thinking about that right now, which is hard when you're 3 to 11, you're down a lot of gold, it's difficult to think about this type of stuff. If AWE wants to chuck five people like it looks like they're going to at a Rift Herald that they get for free, uh, that's going to be a big wave stacking up at the bot side. But right now, so things are starting to stack up on top of Subarashi right now. Good flash to get out of the flag and drag right there. There's the ultimate pop from Ariri trying to take down this Tarek if possible. There's the ultimate bot, uh, brought out from Subarashi. And flash burn from Ariri once again, another hook. Holy cow, they're burning a lot to kill this Tauric. Ignite also coming out there. And they're deciding to commit five people to the Rift Herald. Now, and that's okay, right? Because Dr. Schmeckles walks out of bot lane and is worried that he needs to arrive over to that fight. Well, that's not true at all. So the bot wave is still just, you know, even on Panda's side of the map. Now, the flip side of this is that Super Rashi took so long to kill us that you get a great setup on a dragon. And speaking of a great setup for a good time, looking for aggression onto Slowbro. Nice. But the Flash, Death Realm, Audible Take, Penguin puts them in dire straits as there's very little chance to go to survive this. But the Choppers buy so much space, Crims finds Schmeckles, and the fight is going so awry. Four Pandas with hats for a good time, dropping to the sheer damage that a 7 and 0 Zaya can put out. And a Riri finds another dredge line, flag and drag to follow. Cubes taken so low. And the ultimate from Yan Yan seals the fate, and Subarashi's dying for the second time this minute. A quadra kill for the Zaya. Yan Yan is having none of what Panas with Hats is serving. Yeah, no, uh, you know, there was enough action up in the top side, up in the bot side, all over the map that I completely forgot about the 5 and Ozaya. It's now a 9 and Ozaya. It's, uh, this could be devastating here. I don't think they can end the game quite. But I don't see any reason why they don't get the charge there onto the inhibitor. They're going to walk back, get that soul point online. I think, did they kill that Rift Herald just in time before the charge came through? I'm not sure. Saw the 50 gold pop up relatively nope. early. No, the charge did come through. There's the soul point coming through. And I was saying that both Tank Penguin and Dr. Schmeckles probably wouldn't see each other for a while. So they are here once again together. Uh, now they did merge. Schmeck Put Schmeckles in those side lanes, get some stuff going. You know, uh, it was really disappointing that he wasn't there pushing that bot lane. I, I feel like as Pandas with Hats, you need to recognize we're super far behind right now. We cannot be looking for a fight, especially when we're missing our support. They might have burnt a lot of cooldowns. They try and go for the pick there onto Mordekaiser of all people who can force the play to not go well. Um, and they they they're unable to get that kill. Uh, Mordekaiser just pops the death realm and then they're in an awful situation because there is a massive Zaya on the other side of the field. Um, so, you know, get the split push going. I think that's where your advantage is right now. Slowbro is relatively big, but, you know, uh, Trundle can take those trades. Uh, let, let's see them commit to this strategy if this is what they want to do. Yeah, and as they commit to this strategy, AWE now have the room to counter commit. So, Ruby's actually hovering around this top side of potential to make a good play, force a good play for the side of AWE, despite that split pushing Trundle with Holebreaker not in yet a lot of those resistances. Uh, aren't, aren't there, and we're, we're going to see Zaya and Nautilus start to walk up towards this top site. Dr. Schmeichels just has to respect it. They do have a proper vision in the enemy jungle, so they are going to know where that Zaya is going to be, but it's just really hard for Dr. Schmeichels to play this. Hopefully, going to pick up a hole breaker on this back should make life a lot easier for that 1v1, so you can actually just, you know, see the Mordekaiser and choose to fight him. Uh, and we'll have to see Schmeichels picked up, I think, a Ruby Crystal? On that back, so I'm not exactly yeah. sure uh, what he's itemizing into. Maybe it's Steric's Gauge. Uh, is actually going to be the choice for Dr. Schmeckles. That would be really disappointing, in my opinion. I think that that side lane threat's all you have right now on the side of Fandas with Hats. And I mean, it, you can look at those big fat numbers up at the top of your screen 3 to 17. Things are not going Panda's way. Yeah, no, you gotta play to what's working right now. And I think that that's basically all it's been so far. Um, I, I briefly got on topic with this Tarak pick. I don't know where the attention came from. I think somebody picked... I think Lucas picked it in LPL. Uh, and then suddenly Tark showed up, and Tark isn't... Uh, I'll say, Tark's not good. Stop playing <laughs> him. It, like, it, it is so rare that you can actually get everything to work online, and I think especially at this level of play, he's difficult to play around. Uh, there's other supports right now that do his thing better, and I, I don't understand why he keeps coming from. I don't think this is on Subarashi necessarily. I think this champion just doesn't perform as much as you probably need him to right now. Nearly a two thirds, or excuse me, a third down, and I think that might be the first down there for Panos with Hats. Is uh, Doctor Schmeckles is the first one to get picked off. This Baron timer is currently ticking. They do have cubes on the bot lane turret though. I think there's room to rotate. Grab two turrets right now. Grab some objective bounties. And if for a good time can find steel. this steel right now, do you know when to go in? Is there at the right time? Is it going to happen? It's low HP. Yes! It. 
able to get the steel on the board. That's out. exactly what you need. And is he going to be able to make it out? There's no flash no. for Silver. Oh. They do go over the wall, trying to pick off this Shen if they can, oh. and they do. Yun Yun finds the kill. Unfortunate that there was no reaction there from Pandas to get that mid lane pushing in. But hey, they do have that top lane pushing in. They have full vision of everybody that is uh, coming in in this mid lane. Hubes is recalling instead of going for that bot lane inhibitor turret. I feel like that's the right play. I, they have full vision. They, they were walking over wards. I feel like, they, oh, it's such an unfortunate situation there for Hubes. Force some recalls. Get them off your base. They are going to be able to hold away from Nexus turrets here, I guess. But I think getting the, the bot lane inhibitor, forcing people away, maybe creating a numbers advantage. You have teleport on that Azir. I think that's just a misplay from Hubes. Missed opportunity, but it is the safe play at the end of the day. Yep, and ultimately it's just going to be an inhibitor taken so far from the side of AWE, and the Baron is now on the side of Pandas with Hats, which is hopefully going to stall a little longer, but will it stall long enough? Unclear. Infernal Soul coming in in just about a minute, and that's going to be where Pandas with Hats just have to make a stand. I have to imagine when Infernal Soul comes through, you can't survive anything Zaya puts out for the rest of the entire game. Subarashi, you don't have vision. I don't know if you can walk up there. That's super dangerous. I'm very surprised. Nope, yep, nope, nope, there it goes. And Subarashi's in a lot of trouble. Flash is short and is going to get out, but Flash burnt for two wards is not the best trade in the book. Yep, uh, it's not really what you necessarily want, especially because those wards are going to get cleared out right now. This Baron does give the opportunity for that split push. Sterix Gauge Trundle to try and get some plays on the top lane right now as AWE is hard committing to this Infernal Soul. Once again, we're talking about a game where it's four dragons to Infernal Soul, and the other team just kind of has to deal with it. I don't think for a good time is going to be given anywhere near as much uh, enough space to try and make this play happen the second time. Right now, Slowbro has found the Shen. There's the engage coming in from Krins. The Death Realm was burnt relatively early. And you know what? There's not enough people here for AWE to make this one work as he is going to pop out. The trap's are already down. Slowbro, a little bit of a bad situation right now. There's the Trundle pulling up uh, play in the top lane. Everyone's going to go invincible from that Tarek. And that is going to be the maximum of his usefulness over this fight. The Redemption is already burned in the middle there. Down goes the Shen. And surprise, Yon Yon is here. There's the Emperor's Divide hitting three. But that's not going to be enough to get anything done right now. Yon Yon flashing forward. Is going to pick up a couple more kills for the bonus points. And AWE looks like they're all going to recall. There's going to be no one pressuring the Nexus at the moment. Maybe there is. A little bit uh, flimsy on the decision making right now as it is. Just Dr. Schmeckles pushing in that top side. Does have the ultimate available. Has to get away from Slowbro in order to make it happen there. Or excuse me, the ultimate Air TP available is going into the uh, top lane. So I don't think that they're going to be able to take those Nexus turrets. But it is going to be soul picked up for AWE. Yeah, and that Infernal Soul should be the nail in the coffin here. I, I think uh, maybe if this Trundle was Hullbreaker, I, I'd start to think of some more scenarios where, yeah, Schmeckles finds a, a solid backdoor and AWE overcommits to an objective again. Seaborg gets solo killed by Schmeckles, which, by the way, that happened in that last fight. I don't I don't know if you noticed that one escape, but uh, Schmeckles did solo kill Seaborg, and that's why he did, wasn't able to teleport uh, into the fight proper. Um, but... Without Hullbreaker, it's really hard for me to see how there, there's an opportunity, really, to get in there. And we're, we're going to see a Trundle now itemizing with all that gold uh, towards Titanic Hydra, which I think is probably a pretty good idea at this point. I, I still, I'm still, i still going to preach Hullbreaker, but honestly, Titanic Hydra is probably your second best. Um, yeah, this is, this is a weird game state. I honestly just feel like... AWE should have ended this game a while ago, and they're just taking a bit of a minute to get there, but now with Infernal Soul, shouldn't be much of an issue. There's zero threat to Yon Yon, really, at any point. I think Yon Yon would have to uh, walk into enemy Fountain for there to be a modicum of a threat, and even still, uh, Feather Call, or... What, what is that ultimate call? Is it Feather Call? Uh, a big don't die move. You big press don't the R button, move. you don't die. Yep. Very yeah, simple. But... Uh, one thing I want to point out right now is that the gold lead does not uh, as big as it really should be for AWE. They have missed out on a lot of opportunities to get themselves on top of the tables right now, and uh, I think they might try and get themselves on top of this Shen at the moment. There's Cataclysm Burn. Does manage to get him locked down. Two hooks coming down on that Shen. Regen isn't available there. Yon Yon just calling the feathers in and back, or excuse me, out and back in again. Picks up a pair of kills for it. And now there is Dr. Schmeckles on the back line. Has to burn Flash almost instantly. You cannot eat up that damage. Slowbro picks up the kill. Oriri getting taken a little bit low from the turret shots there. Super Ooh. Mega Death Rocket doesn't quite find the kill. Yon Yon, Oriri, Seaborg, Slowbro. All taken quite low, but still not enough pressure. There's the Q into the ulti combo. Goodbye, Hubes. And now it is just the turret left over to try and pick up some kills there. Crimson's able to tank it up. And oh, no. apparently dueling man number six at the moment. Those minions causing some problems in the mid lane. And this should 
finally be AWE taking this with the Infernal Soul at their back. Yeah, after finally putting a mid to bot, uh, a grand total of 0, 15, and 0 behind this is sure to be the final fight for the time taken into the Death Realm will take thing. Give it a chance to free fire, made invincible, but AWE know that the 50 gold provided by the Nexus is more than any kill can provide. And AWE keeping their dreams alive here and proof their record uh, by, by doubling their wins. Uh, in one game is pretty impressive, and overall, you know, really solid couple of weeks for them. Uh, two and two is much better than the zero and six coming from before, and yeah, there's there's some silver linings now for the side of AWE and their playoff chances. Yeah, uh, it, it's possible at this point. You know, they are looking stronger overall. Um, uh, standout game from Yon Yon. Yon Yon did exactly what an ADC needs to do, and uh, AW is able to make things happen around him. Uh, 15 and 0 Kaisa. There was really no pressure that came Zion. through. From, oh, yeah. Pff, oh, I always get those two <laughs> mucked up. But, yeah, it, it, that's what it is. You know, you let that Zaya go off like that. It is the crit build. She scales incredibly well as you go into those later stages. She does so much damage from, you know, the distance that she can put it out at. It's it's insane. Um, I need to uh, quickly bully Voltaic Penguin. The Kraken Slayer is the right choice for this game because you're behind, but don't go Runans. You really need the extra damage from something like an LDR or the range uh, from an RFC. But yeah, I think that is the least of their problems right now. Panthers of Hats did show some signs of life, but it just really wasn't there. Yeah, I think they, they picked the Shen, which has a lot of opportunities to help out the lanes, and all the lanes really got ended before Stand United was even a factor. And you just have to go back and go, well, okay. Um... I guess yeah, we need do? something that wins bot lane at level three because they're just going to lose. Uh, yeah. Crims, I want to point out, played an absolutely fantastic game, got the ball rolling for the side of AWE and kept it rolling all game long, 3-0 and 22 for their efforts. So uh, yeah. I, I think that was a really standout game. Obviously, Yan Yan is the one that uh, probably dealt some absolutely bonkers damage numbers, but unfortunately, the Riot Quiet will not grace us with those yes. details. But uh, we are graced with the gold income, and as we can see, that Yanyan has made a ton of money this game and is going to have uh, probably a little bit left over to spend at the FOF shop. There are some merch drops that are coming out. Get your pre-orders in as early as possible. We are going to talk to Yanyan about how they were able to use all that gold to deal as much as they were able to throughout the entirety of that game, just as we take off for the night. This is the RLS casting squad casting or, uh, taking off for the night. Thank you very much for showing up, and we will have a brief interview with Yanyan after this. Open up different portals. It's I and me. It's me and I. I'm by myself. I'm down a ride. I'm taking on the tide. Size of tsunamis touching the sky. I got a quick scan. It's time to move. Leaving everything else behind. I got something to prove. I'm just riding away. No, I ain't running away. I got memories set. Oh, I'm just finding my place. Where I belong to. Billy glory in my soul.
Hello everyone, Chris Edgeworth here with tonight's final interview, joined by Yan Yan of the victorious, not trickle down economics, but Art of War esports. Of uh, how are you feeling after the win? Oh, I just finally won another one. Honestly, <laughs> that's how I feel. I'm just really happy. Hey, yeah, doubled your doubled your <laughs> win rate. You know, yep, yep, two hundred percent. Let's talk about setting the table for this game here, you folks. Uh, in the draft, you ended up on the newest addition to the meta uh, champion, seeing some um, attention as long as well as the Kaisa. Uh, 